Folks, there's a progression here. We heard, David is saying, I heard of this thing about God having a home, a habitation. I heard of it in Bethlehem, but I found it when I was out on the run when Saul was chasing me down. And if you remember the situation, um, he was, you know, here he is, he's running, he's having to, to sleep in the woods, he's having to sleep in caves, he's, his life is in danger, he's always having to be on alert. And this is going on for years, and this is a young man. And so here he is, all this is going on, and while he's running and he's hiding and everything, I can see David laying there at night. And I can see him thinking after several years of this, years of every night sleeping out in the woods somewhere, hiding, thinking about Bethlehem. And thinking, man, you know, having good thoughts about, man, wasn't it nice when I was in my house, with my parents, with my family, with those that I love and felt the warmth of that situation. Wasn't that a wonderful time? Now here he, he's just thinking about himself right now. He's just thinking how good it was to have a house. And not only to have a house, but David was never at rest. His life was always in jeopardy. They were, there was no place. He had to be on the alert. So when he's laying there, and you remember the, the Bible says that he didn't even sleep among the men. He would sleep out alone in a, in a ditch somewhere away from everything so that people, if they came and attacked the camp, they wouldn't kill him. So David was a man of war. But here he is. He's sleeping all alone. He's looking up at the same sky that he looked up when he was a kid. And he's thinking, man, it was sure nice when I had a home. It was sure nice when I had a place of rest and I didn't have to worry about the enemy. And I didn't have to worry about being under attack and everything. And it was there in Bethlehem that he first heard of it. But it was out there in those woods that he found the truth that he said, oh, my God. And, and again... I'll share from history and some other time I'll share from the scriptures how I believe David came up with this reality, but we find by his experience he began to realize God wanted a home. He began to realize God could have just been God on a throne up in heaven and everybody could have just prayed to him. Does that sound familiar? He's just a God up in heaven and everybody prayed. But he said, God didn't want to do that. God wanted to have a habitation among us. God figured out a plan. God said, I want to come down and I want to dwell in your midst. And God said, build a tabernacle, build a temple, and let me come live in there with you. God was the one who wanted a habitation on this earth. God was the one. And the whole story, and again, we won't get into this, but I'll just make this, you know, this statement. The whole story of Israel in the wilderness was one primary thing. No, it wasn't to get Israel into the promised land. It was to get the Ark of the Covenant to a place of rest that he had chosen. Folks, we're the fulfillment of that. We're supposed to be the house of God. We're supposed to be where he lives in us and where he, he has his expression through us. Instead, we become Christians that, that hold up Christian principles, but there's no Christ. There's no, there's no ark. There's no presence in that sense. You know, we say he's in our heart, but he's not habiting, inhabiting us in the sense of he's living in there. We're his home. Our bodies are our home for the most part. But David is laying there and he's going, this is not comfortable. This is not good. And then he starts thinking about all this stuff. And he goes, you know what? God doesn't have a home. God doesn't have a house. God doesn't have a place of rest. God is not comfortable. And that's why they were carrying the ark all the time. And so, um, you know, these, these were some of the things that he began to meditate on. Now, let me give you some of the recent history uh, why I believe that he came up with this. Look in 1 Samuel again, except this time it's chapter 4. <clears throat> and while you're turning there, you say, well, now why is this important? It's the difference between nominal Christianity that lives for God and the very desire of the heart of God to live within his people. He called us his temple. But are we any more the temple of God than that building was the temple of God in the Old Testament? That's the question. 
where he's, you know, not free to express himself and, and uh, live through us. So first thing.